This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at CES 2013. I'm joined by Dol excuse me, Roland Flyku from Dolby Labs, and he's here to tell us about Dolby's latest offering in 3D. Welcome to the program, Roland. Thanks, Neil. Good to see you. Now, um, you have a lot going on in your exhibit. You've got computers, you've got tablets, you've got a, a 3D television. Let's start with, with the computer. What do we have on display? Right, so what we're showing here is uh, Dolby 3D for entertainment devices. And uh, this is a technology suite that we're offering to manufacturers of glasses, free devices that uh, provide the best entertainment experience for 3D without glasses, and that includes smartphones, tablets, and uh, PCs, laptops. And what we have here is uh, a Apple MacBook Pro with a multi-view and switchable uh, single-viewer head-tracking uh, setup that uses Dolby 3D to render the uh, stereoscopic input signal to out to multi-views or out to one viewer to optimize the depth effect. And then on top of that, we're also showing a 1080p 11-inch uh, tablet that provides the best possible um, HD entertainment experience for multi-view uh, usage, which means several people can view the 3D at the same time. Now, when we're talking about Dolby 3D, I, I mean, it's easy to, to get confused whether we're talking about hardware, whether we're talking about software, or we're talking about both. So what is the Dolby 3D product itself? Right. So Dolby 3D is a technology suite that uh, focuses on the rendering algorithm that is required to visualize any type of 3D content on a glasses-free device. And uh, with this, we are agnostic to what, what kind of display is used. So there is a variety of types of glasses-free displays that exist and we support all of them with our rendering suite. Okay. Why, why, would, you know, why is Dolby 3D important? I mean, there's all kinds of ways to get content to a display. What, what problem is it solving? Right, so we have teamed up with uh, Philips in the Netherlands to solve a very unique problem, which is the, um, the art of rendering 3D content in a glasses-free way uh, that is very comfortable to look at without uh, any kind of disturbances or ghosting or double images or blurring. Uh, while at the same time uh, maximizing the depth effect that everybody wants to have and by maintaining the full resolution of the image. Okay, so are we talking about uh, the display, like solving a problem with the display itself, or are we strictly talking about how that data is sent to the display? Right, so we are worrying about the end-to-end -end, um, system, so we, we talk to the Hollywood creatives about how to make their 3D movies so that they render in the best possible way on glasses-free devices, and how that data then gets moved and compressed throughout the ecosystem. We have a demo here with Voodoo, where we're hosting our Dolby 3D encoded clips on the Voodoo cloud, uh, just to show how that can be you know, easily implemented. And ultimately, we, we want to provide and, and render out the, the 3D in the best possible way to any glasses-free display. And each glasses-free display will have its own characteristics in terms of the number of views, whether it's a multi-view, single-viewer display, the screen size, the number of pixels. And all of those can be dialed into our engine in order to make sure that every product is served in the best possible way by the Dolby 3D algorithm. I keep hearing glasses free or auto stereoscopic. What is it about glasses free that you know is, is different from glasses? And what I mean by that is you're, you seem to be focused on this, that you're trying to solve problems with glasses free. Right. What are those problems? What are you facing with glasses free that you wouldn't face with the glasses based 3D te technology? Right. Well, so first of all, we, we truly believe that uh, 3D entertainment in the home won't succeed until we can finally get rid of the glasses. So using glasses in the theater is fine because it's a different environment, you know, it's a dark room, you look at the movie for two hours, you do nothing else, it's fine. In the home, wearing glasses is cumbersome. You want to get up, you talk to your friends, you look at your family and you have to take off the glasses or you want to, you know, check your email while you're watching a movie, it's, it's always cumbersome. Glasses free is really the technology needed in order to make 3D mainstream in the home. Now, Having said that, making glasses free 3D look as good as glasses based uh, 3D is uh, difficult. And that's the problem we're, we're uh, solving. So we are, you know, our technology suite is uh, tuned to work with any kind of 3D material. So you can play your 3D Blu-ray disc, you can watch your ESPN 3D on, on DirecTV. All of those 3D sources can be fed into a Dolby 3D enabled glasses free 3D TV and it'll look beautiful. Can you explain why glasses free is difficult? Because I know like there's parallax barrier, there's lenticular, and there's certain trade-offs with these technologies. Maybe you could elaborate a little more to the right. problem. Right, so the, um, the main problem is that you have to um, 
find um, a nice balance between different parameters that all influence each other on a glasses-free display. So, for example, you uh, want to have great resolution, like all HD or 3D content is HD, you want to maintain the HD resolution. You also want to maintain the maximum amount of depth. At the same time, you want to avoid blurriness, you want to keep the transitions between the viewing zones very smooth, and once you dial up one parameter, the other two will suffer. So you have to find a way of, of balancing those out in a way that um, none of them fall below a certain threshold where it's unacceptable, uh, while at the same time, you know, maximizing the experience overall. And also, what we're also focusing on is to make the um, experience uh, seamless for the consumer. We want the consumers to be able to sit down on their couch, turn on their Dolby 3D television and just enjoy the content without having to push any buttons, without having to worry whether the batteries and the glasses are uh, charged or not, without uh, having to worry whether the content is 3D or not. Everything is supposed to happen automatically and should be seamless. Excellent, excellent. Now, um, you talked about the, the, the notebook and the tablets. What, what do we have here? So this is our 56-inch uh, television prototype. This uh, works with a Quad HD or 4K or Ultra HD TV panel. And um, with this, uh, we are using a lenticular lens that creates the 3D effect. Uh, this one renders out to 28 different views. So within each viewing cone, which is um, you know one or two degrees wide, we accommodate 28 views to make the experience very seamless. So you can pretty much sit anywhere you like in the room. You're going to uh, get a great experience. You don't have any dead spots. You don't have any areas where you you know can't see anything. The worst thing that happens if you're not exactly in the right spot is that the depth will suffer a little bit and it'll reduce itself to a little bit to look a bit more like 2D. One of the challenges I could imagine is with a multi-view display is you need obviously a lot of content. It's not just like with stereoscopic where you have a left and right view. Suddenly you've got, you know, you've got completely different left right views depending on where you're sitting in the room. D right. Does Dolby 3D have a solution around that? Sure, yes, so you're absolutely right. Most of the content today that is 3D is stereoscopic, which means that you know, the left eye and the right eye exists, and you know, for a glasses-based system, that's all you need. For a glasses-free multi-view system, the question is, how do you make 28 views from two? And that's exactly the problem we're solving. So our, our algorithm is uh, smart enough to calculate for each frame of video uh, 28 different uh, views uh, based on a, a regular stereoscopic left eye, right eye input signal. And doing that properly and decently at a, at a high quality, that's really a you know, difficult task. And uh, we think that to, together with the research from Philips and the research from Dolby, we have mastered that task. So we have a depth extraction engine that creates a depth map for each frame of video that is um, derived from the left eye, right eye input, and the disparity in those images is used to calculate the depth map, and then this depth map is then used to render out those 28 views. Now that sounds very complicated, it is complicated, but ultimately what it uh, does is, is makes your, uh, great, uh, your glass free experience great and enjoyable. Well, the positive thing is, even as complicated a job as it is, it's not the consumer that's doing it, it's, <laughs> it's your responsibility. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. And, and we're very happy. So this is a very enjoyable project that we've been working on for the last 15 months. And uh, going forward, we're looking forward to a lot more innovation. And one of these you know, types of innovation that we are working towards is to then, you know, as a next step, um, get the, the Hollywood content community to understand that when they make a 3D movie, there's a lot of data that they generate on set in post-production that today is discarded after the movie is done and the only output is the left eye, right eye. We want them to give us more of that metadata uh, so that we can encode it and send it down the pipe so that the receiver at the other end can benefit from it for an even better glasses-free experience. Excellent, excellent. Now, I appreciate this is a prototype and, and what you, you've shown in the other room are, are prototypes as well, like a right. proof of concept. Um, now, the industry is still very much in that glasses mindset, either through polarized and with shutter glasses. Um, would you, now I know in the mobile industry, we're seeing a fair bit of glasses free and we're also seeing a fair bit of mobile in gaming, like mobile gaming devices like Nintendo 3DS. Now, working closely with display makers and, and you know, obviously for this to be successful, it has to be affordable as well. Um, do you have some, would you be willing to make a guesstimate of when we'd start to see glasses free 3D televisions in, in affordable form for, for consumers like you and I? Right. So um, what we've seen so far, you know, in the eight months since we've launched is that the interest from the television manufacturing industry has been tremendous. 
So we're actually, in fact, working with several tier one manufacturers on integrating Dolby 3D into their future glasses-free uh, televisions. I mentioned earlier that uh, this kind of television requires a 4K or Ultra HD panel. You know, this is all the rage right now at CES, which is great because once these panels come down in price and become more um, available, uh, we think that the, the glasses-free use case is a great addition to a 4K television. So, um, you know, in other words, this lens can be switchable, so you turn the lens off, you have, uh, you know, 4K 2D uh, at the best possible quality, you turn the lens on or it turn, turns itself on automatically when it sees 3D content coming in, and you get great 3D uh, material uh, presented to you in a glasses-free manner. So, uh, to actually answer your question, um, we think that towards the end of this year we'll see um, LCD panels that will have a better performance than what we've seen so far. These will then be prime candidates to be integrated into television products. So hopefully in early 2014 we'll, we'll see some that uh, truly make a difference in terms of performance and are also affordable. You see, I, I think that's where the excitement really is. I mean, there's all this talk of 4K, 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 but I think the big benefit is that, you're, you know, if you have an affordable 4K panel, mm -hmm. people can enjoy their stereoscopic 3D without the need of glasses and at, at perhaps a 1080p rating. Is that correct? Is that how it would make, mix together? Absolutely. So a, a Quad HD or 4K panel can generate glasses-free 3D at uh, roughly 1080p resolution. So the HD input signal that you're getting from a Blu-ray disc or a broadcast is exactly what then gets rendered out to you in a glasses-free form. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Neil. Excellent. Good to see you. Excellent. We'll be back with more from CES 2013. Thank you for watching.